Hi guys, welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. Today I have a fly tying demonstration for you. Because it's the first on the channel, I've chosen a fly that's special to me, and that's the Rainbow Flash Damsel. It's called me my PB Tiger of 12 and a half pound, and that was a cracking fish. So it's a fly you want to have in your fly box. Now if you want to see how to fish this fly, check in the description below, I'll put a link to my top six video where I explain everything I do when fishing this fly. But for now, let's see how it's tied. So for the hook we're going to be using, we're going to be using an Elite Fly Short Shank Special size 10. Now this hook I think is what separates ours from the rest of the uh, Rainbow Flash Damsels on the market. It's a great shape, it's got an extra bit of weight to it and it really works well for lures. It's my go-to lure um, hook in fairness. And we're going to be using a 140 UTC Olive as our tying silk. Come in just behind the eye of the hook down about five mil and then back up about halfway and that's where we're going to tie our eyes in come in and snip away the excess for our eyes we've got a blue bead chain bead this is from Flybox. absolutely superb eyes for lures the paint stays strong doesn't fade away we're just going to tie it in on the top of our hook figure eight couple turns underneath figure eight again couple turns on the side figure eight again and once you're happy your eyes are in tight like so that's not going anywhere most people now will add glue or just keep tightening it as tight as they can get it you don't want to do that the reason for this is if you clip something on your back cast say a rock a tree maybe even the boat if that if their um, eyes are solid and there's no movement, no give at all, they're just going to snap. So you'll be left with one eye on and one eye off. Whereas if there's a tiny bit of movement or if force is added and you need to move them and they can move slightly, they're going to stay on. Your fly's going to last longer. So a great tip there is not to use super glue when gluing in your eyes. Now for the tying silk, we're going to come all the way back down the hook shank and then back up to behind the eyes. This is just to give us a layer of silk to tie our tail onto so it stays on top of the hook and locks in securely. For our tail, we're going to be using an olive marabou. Again from Flybox, it just has lots of fibres on that plume. And I'm going to take away all this rubbish material at the bottom and then take about an inch and a half to two inches worth of fibres and just peel them away from the stem and collect them together. So I've got a nice tail here ready to tie in. Come in and snip away all this waste and all the thicker materials at the bottom and make sure you give it a little pinch just to remove any excess um, material just so you can tie it in nice and tight. Come in behind the eyes, tie and keep that tail on top of the hook as you tie down. When you get to the back, a little tip for you, take your tying silk under the tail, back over the top and this will make sure it doesn't spin at all. Now that tail is okay, it's a little bit long, so I'm gonna come in about one and a half to two times the length and just pinch away any excess bits that make it too long. And then see how that's sitting. Wet my fingers a little bit so I can get a better idea of how it's gonna sit. Yep, that looks perfect to me. That's exactly what I want for my tails and my damsels. Now, I'm not quite finished with the tail because I've got a little bit of flash to add like I do with most of my lures. And this one is the Dancer Flashaboo, again from Flybox. You can see there it's a multicolored strand. Helps give the Rainbow Flash its name. I'm just gonna tie three of them on one side, side facing me. And then I'm gonna take the other fibers up around the eyes between them, hold it back and then tie it in on the side facing you. So you end up with three strands on each side. Cut away any excess bits and then see how that's sitting. That looks pretty good to me. Now for the ribbon of the fly we've got Uni Myler in rainbow and this is 132 of an inch. Really good material again following on the rainbow theme. As you can see here, it changes colour depending on where in the material you're tying in. So we're going to start by tying this in on the side, like so. And then for the body, we've got an olive 
seals for this is just venyards and we're going to tie this on very loosely we don't want to tie this in tight at all so we're going to come in here dab it on have a couple of turns just to catch some of the fibers in and then loosely we're going to dab it forwards all the way to behind the eyes making sure we're not too tight so that the fibers really stick out and give you plenty of movement in the water Come away and take away any excess material. Now for your ribbon, we're going to counter rib the fly up the body, like so. So we've ended up with a nice blue coloration here. Next one might be red, then pink. The rainbow flash material gives you great colors and it really changes the fly ever so slightly, but uh, it really looks good in the water. Now, you could do this you could dub the head with maybe a brown or an orange and that's done but I want a little bit more movement a little bit more natural looking so we're going to put in an olive partridge hackle just behind the eye of the beads so I'm going to choose one that's well marked and then take away all this waste material at the bottom like so and then I'm going to come in here with some hackle pliers grab the tips and then Pull all the fibers backwards down the stem. So I create a nice little tie-in point there. I'm going to offer it up to the side of my fly, lock it in, pull it back, and then tie on top of itself with three tight turns. So that's not going to go anywhere. With my hackle pliers, I'm going to grab the partridge feather, working the materials backwards. I'm going to do one turn behind the eye of the bead. And then I'm going to come across with my tying silk and just trap it in place, like so, and pull everything backwards. One, two turns in front, come in and snip away the bottom of the stem where you didn't use the material, like so. So that's added legs to the fly, gives it even more movement and just really creates that natural insect buggy look and feel when it fishes the water. Now you could tie off here, could be done, but I like to add one more thing, and that is brown glister sparkle dubbing, again from Vanyards. It just creates a contrast on the head, a nice dark spot like most natural insects have. And it looks really buggy, so we're going to get some of that on there. So I'm going to take a turn to catch it in, and then we want this quite tight. Just tie it in. Like so, figure eight it on top, so you get a nice head created. And there we go. That is our rainbow flush damsel. To finish it off and make sure it lasts a long time, we're going to add a tiny bit of varnish there before coming in and whip finishing just in front of them beads. So three turns will do it for me. Pull backwards and then I pull against backwards directly on the thread with the fly. And that pulls any fibers that were in front of the eye backwards with it. And it makes sure you've got a nice clear eye ready to thread your fluorocarbon through. So that's the fly finished. The Rainbow Flush Damsel. Deadly fly. Give it a try. Let us know how you get on. Well, I hope you enjoyed that fly tying demonstration. If you did, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to our channel. If you don't tie flies yourself, but you'd like to give this fly a try, you can find it on my website at ukflyfisher.com as well as many others. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.